Testing, there we go. Okay, we're good to go. So obviously people are gonna be coming back in from lunch, so just be aware you are gonna be dinging the bell until everyone comes back inside. Um, we are super excited to be hosting this session. Um, basically one of, the, one of the big themes that's been going throughout today is what's happening in the US? And you know, what's happening on Wall Street? What's the thoughts around Wall Street? But then the other aspect is, is what are, from, a, from a US perspective, what are they actually seeing globally? And this is, a, this is a question we get asked, and it's a question that most people have, because you know, it, the reality is the US leads, uh, leads the, the, the financial, financial markets. And you know, specifically, you know, coming out of New York, we're really excited to have Bob involved in, in today's session. And I'm gonna let him talk about sort of his background and, and his story. But I think from an investor's perspective, it's really understanding that the mindset and said, Bob's gonna be presenting uh, blockchain terminal, which you can also visit their, their stand uh, later during today. Um, you know, to, to understand where their thoughts are and, and what they're seeing is very different to, to what we actually see in Australia. So for me, this is going to be one of the most powerful sessions of, of the entire uh, conference today. And I said, we're, we're very proud that Bob, Bob's come over here from the US to participate. Uh, so without further ado, please welcome Bob Bonomo. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bob Bonomo, president of CG Blockchain, the creator of Blockchain Terminal and the BCT token. I wanna thank the Wholesale Investor uh, Conference for inviting me to speak today. I've seen some very dynamic questions at our booth. I'm very excited to be here. I'm also excited to be in an English-speaking uh, part of the world after spending the last uh, 12 days in Asia. And I won't be offended if you need to use Google Translate to fully interpret my uh, New York accent, that's okay. I've been asked to give a brief summary, and it will be brief, because this topic could take the whole conference itself. It's very dynamic, rules, regulations, uh, impediments to adoption, uh, but a brief summary of the state of crypto in the United States. And all of a sudden, my clicker doesn't work now. It start, was working before. Must always satisfy the lawyers. That's one of the rules. Embrace regulation. Don't try to shield yourself from it. The pain will be much less. The results will be much more positive. So globally, the state of crypto is dynamic. That's about a bigger under, of an understatement you can possibly make, but some very high-level uh, metrics. Uh, someone earlier quoted that there are 2,000 cryptocurrencies. I think that's a more accurate count. Uh, the bottom line is that these are being generated every day, various categories, various use cases. Uh, we had a tremendous year in 2019, exceptionally outsized returns. Um, we've had obviously a, a drop, significant drop since then. Uh, but institutions are very excited. They're looking at these outside returns. They're looking at these wide spreads. And they're trying to figure out how they can embrace this new asset class. And at the highest level, we're moving away from this Wild West mentality. Um, anything goes to a much more regulated and appropriately so regulated environment. So what are we talking about? We're talking about disintermediation. We're talking about changing the way business works. There won't be any industry or business model that will be left unchanged. They will all be embracing blockchain over time, reducing latency, increasing transparency. And the biggest example is the banks, right? They're centralized by definition. Crypto is decentralized. They've, they have a very well-established regulatory framework and we're struggling to iterate through various options and various levels of regulation, but that's happening as we speak. The foundation has been in place since the Medici's in the 1500s for centralized banking, uh, and that's uh, fiat driven. They can control the money supply, and in fact, the 2008 financial crisis was really the genesis of why we're all here. Concern about printing money, about uh, reducing people's uh, wealth through that inflationary, um, uh, you know, uh, options and, and, and movements. Um, and crypto is really fintech, technology driven, and the money supply is logic based, it's code driven. So it isn't emotion, it isn't uh, regulators doing that on a, on, a, on a whim, it's actually controlled. And this has been entrenched for centuries, the traditional banking system, and it's mind blowing to me that we are here, even with the downturn, in a nearly $300 billion business, 
that started less than 10 years ago. If you really think about it, it's quite amazing. So the scope of potential impact of tokenization is quite broad. The traditional financial world, the financial instruments, equity and debt will, become, will begin to be tokenized, offering two flavors, full security capabilities where you have voting rights, you have a share in the profits through dividends, and the more tokenized approach where you just share in the usage of the ecosystem. Similarly, commodities, the concept of, of provenance, understanding how uh, uh, materials are sourced and made and signed off on over time. Uh, this is something that the blockchain will bring to bear across many, many industries. Similarly, uh, democratizing access to commercial real estate and venture capital is another area where blockchain is really making major headways, enabling smaller, uh, uh, less sophisticated individuals to participate uh, in these uh, areas of business. And perhaps my favorite uh, is really the creative use of blockchain. When I describe blockchain, I say that at the fundamental level, it is reversing the arrows of data ownership. We don't own any of the data about ourselves. It's owned by banks, insurance companies, credit bureaus. We have to climb the mountain to suggest a change and hope it trickles down effectively to me and to other consumers. This technology will allow time-stamped, limited access to a subset of your data and will, will it, through code, uh, force remuneration for the use of your information. That's very empowering, especially in the third world where I did some philanthropy a number of years ago. Um, the, the poorest of the poor have been uh, transacting with cell phones since the mid-90s because they didn't have to worry about uh, depreciating copper or laying down copper. They leapfrogged the established world through cell technology. And now, built on top of the internet, which was all about simplifying access to information, now, blockchain technologies are really simplifying the movement of value peer-to-peer, -peer, whether that's tokenized value or whether that's representative real, representation of real-world digital assets on the blockchain. So these are the five high-level requirements, I believe, are necessary for institutions to truly adopt this new digital asset class. First and foremost, on a case-by-case -case basis, each product mandate has to be modified to allow uh, the, the adoption of this new digital asset class. Second, and I think this is very, very important, today crypto investing is really crypto trading in my opinion. Everything starts at the desk, it's momentum based, and it's, uh, it's um, uh, social media uh, driven. Who's talking about what coin at what time? And I believe for institutions to truly adopt this technology, that process needs to move upstream to be more repeatable and scalable to adopt the traditional research, portfolio management, and then trading process. And what I mean by that is driving where you're gonna invest in tokens should not be only driven by social media uh, activity, but it should also be driven by formalized analytical processes, valuation models, if you will, that we're familiar with uh, from the equity and, and fixed income space. Things that can be done, not by a single individual, but by an organization to understand how to filter the thousands of choices down to perhaps deciles of, of a perceived higher value, and then hand that baton to the next phase, which is portfolio construction, to fill your containers, whether they're commingled funds or whether to separately manage the account, and then and only then, hand the baton to the trading desk to seek best execution. I think that's very, very important and that's gonna happen. It's starting to happen as I, as I see it on the street. Also some concerns about the reliability uh, to support institutional throughput through the exchanges. That's gonna have to improve. The confidence level is gonna have to improve. Investments are gonna have to be done in crypto exchanges to handle that large volume pending once the floodgate opens and institutions begin to invest in this digital asset class. There's also a major concern about the custody of digital assets. And I've spoken to many hedge funds and it's kind of split 50-50. Many of them say, I'd like my digital assets custodied by my trusted partners, the Goldmans, the Citibanks, the JP Morgans. That may very well be the case. However, some of them are also saying, this is a very different animal and perhaps we should embrace the fiduciary responsibility of custody of these assets to those who grew up in this space and understand cryptography and are growing, most of them are hardware wallet providers and are trying to evolve to full custodial solutions. And um, the challenges of integrating into the blockchain, the trust, 
uh, the need to manage keys. These are all things that are unfamiliar to the traditional tools and products and services on Wall Street. So when we talk about adoption, it's not just about technology, it's not just about comfort, it's not just about processes, it's obviously about regulation. And two of the biggest regulators in the US are the, are the SEC and the CFTC. And it's very interesting that uh, Jay Clayton has made the comment that he has never seen a token that isn't a security. And that's interesting because he's from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Whereas uh, uh, Christopher Giancarlo is much more uh, open to his interpretation. He believes, however, that most of the cryptocurrencies are commodities, which is rather interesting because he works for the Commodities and Futures Trading Corporation. <laughs> so it says to me that the lens you wear throughout the day really does bias you toward what you see. Uh, it doesn't mean that either these are right or wrong. I think there's going to be options for, for utility coins, s uh, security coins, uh, currency coins. I think they're all going to live uh, a healthy life going forward. Now, in the U.S., uh, we have a federated political system, and the, the federal decisions are supposed to trump these uh, state decisions, no pun intended. Uh, however, the states are not waiting. They're going off on their own and, and uh, creating laws uh, and procedures to make sure they don't miss out on this burgeoning uh, ecosystem and opportunity. So while you all, uh, I'm sorry, Arizona has recently allowed taxes to be paid in cryptocurrency, which I find fascinating. Also, Wyoming uh, embraced very recently the distinction about utility coins. They're differing with the SEC and saying, we see a legitimate use cases for utility coins. It's different from the full ownership and, and share in profits that security coins, uh, security tokens, I should say, uh, offer. And last, uh, Nevada is basically uh, banning the taxing of the use of blockchains and smart contracts, which once again, this is all about not missing out on the floodgates opening and this transformational nature of this technology. It will change many, many areas of, of, of the world. Medical records, uh, supply chain management, digital identity is one, right? Moving away from usernames and passwords, eliminating these honeypots of data that people can hack into and have that information distributed is a huge benefit of this technology. And Delaware, uh, the leading uh, state for registration of corporate entities has made a statement that they are planning to evolve their systems and processes to become blockchain based. And lastly, I spent uh, some time a few weeks ago in Puerto Rico, as you know, was very devastated by Mother Nature recently and uh, I met with both the governor and the uh, mayor of, uh, of the region, and they are fully embracing uh, blockchain for the same reason. They see that influx of capital as an opportunity to rebuild their infrastructure and raise uh, the, the, the uh, lifestyle of, of their citizens who've been through quite a lot. So there are three areas that I think, uh, once again, are, are critical for institutional adoption, simplifying exposure, uh, increasing liquidity, and dealing with regulations and trust. So recently in December, uh, the Security Bo Chicago Board of Options Exchange and the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange both began to offer Bitcoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin futures. And that's a tremendous need for any institutional asset manager to be able to make statements about future perceived value uh, and to gain uh, simple access to uh, the ecosystem and the tokenizi tokenized economy. Similarly, the SEC has begun, and this has been a fits and starts kind of a thing, but they're really looking at rule changes to begin to allow Bitcoin ETFs, exchange-traded funds, to provide intraday liquidity to exposure obtained through fiat currencies. And in the regulation and trust area, uh, the, SC the SEC is beginning to look at crypto hedge funds, and it's not surprising. They've been flying blind for years. They have no controls, no audit trails, no regulations. They've made a ton of money. But as I'll talk about in a few minutes, their next wave of uh, perceived inflows are not from individuals, not from high net worth uh, individuals or, 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 or uh, crypto whales, but institutions, pension funds, endowments. And they need to up their game in terms of transparency and reliability and compliance in order to expect institutions to drop $100 million tickets uh, in their portfolio. Coinbase, the biggest exchange in the US, um, is, is positioning to become an, uh, an SEC registered brokerage. Uh, Coinbase custody is enabling custody now for institutions, one of the, one of the solutions that's out there and was very recently announced. And Coinbase Ventures 
is providing capital, capital to blockchain-based ventures to once again embrace and extend this impact of this amazing technology. 2017 was clearly the year of the utility token, and 2018 is similarly the year where many, many institutions and software development houses are looking at the real uh, use of security tokens. And due to this early Wild Wild West mentality, um, this, this movement towards security tokens is really accelerating. To take advantage of that, there are three, and many others actually in the works, who are embracing ecosystems to tokenize uh, securities. And Polymath is one. Uh, they are uh, putting forth an alternative standard to the Ethereum-based ERC-20 token. It's called ST20. Uh, and they're encouraging private equity to leverage this technology. Similarly, Equibit, excuse me, Equibit has produced a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, platform for the uh, capture of both equity and fixed income instruments with a, in a fully compliant AML and KYC environment. And lastly, T0, uh, subsidiary of uh, Overstock, is also offering a security-based platform for the launch of security tokens. So this is the new perception, the new wave, and once again, if it's a security, then institutions are much more comfortable with it than if it's a, if it's a uh, pure utility coin. The real change that's happening, I see it uh, as we speak, is that the big players are really looking at this opportunity and waiting for the right time to enter the fray. And whenever Goldman decides to do something, that's probably a very good sign that the rest will follow eventually. Back in 2015, they purchased uh, Circle in Investment Financial and through a $50 million investment. And Circle has three basic uh, services, Circle Pay, Fiat, peer-to-peer uh, -peer movement of money, uh, Circle Trade, uh, a liquidity provider for cryptocurrencies, and Circle Invest uh, to uh, provide simplified access to crypto for retail consumers. And most recently, that subsidiary of Goldman purchased Poloniex, one of the top 20 uh, crypto exchanges, and they're positioning it as not just being a crypto exchange. They're seeing the broadening of this technology to embrace securities, to embrace the digitization of real world assets, and I think that's really where the power of this technology is gonna, gonna have its biggest impact. And I'd like to end with my product, which you can see outside. I'll be back in about 10 minutes after the next speaker. Our product, Blockchain Terminal, is positioned specifically to allow traditional hedge funds and traditional asset managers to onboard to crypto by uh, acknowledging the fact that their current systems, processes, and tools just don't work in this space, giving them the controls, the audit trails, and the sophisticated uh, trading capabilities that they're used to uh, so they can actually uh, engage in this new environment. And also, on the other side of the aisle, we aim to raise the bar of transparency and compliance for the crypto hedge funds. As I mentioned earlier, they've been flying blind for quite a while, getting those returns, but their next wave of flows are really, uh, they're really looking for institutions to invest, um, and we want to be the default platform for those crypto hedge funds. Uh, I'll describe the, the underlying product more in my, in my follow-up uh, presentation. But that's our position. We believe there will be a convergence over the next few years where traditional and crypto asset managers converge. Uh, and we want to be the default platform for both uh, consumers. So uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. And I uh, hope this was interesting and helpful. And please uh, come see us later on at the uh, Blockchain Terminal booth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. And now I'd like to welcome James Giancotti of OddUp to the stage, please. Hi, all. Uh, it's good to be an Australian back in Australia. So I'm a Melbourne boy originally, so don't hold that against me, please. Um, but today I'm going to talk about the about OddUp and the Up Network. So first and foremost, uh, for the people sitting up, up there, if you want to grab a seat, feel free to do that so you can listen to us and all the other wonderful, present, wonderful presenters. So um, I'm going to take it that you guys don't know who we are. We've been around for four years. We're OddUp and we're building the Up Network and we've been rating startups for quite some time. 
We've been rating startups for nearly four years and our focus has been finding the best unicorns. So when you heard about Diddy and people go, oh, Diddy, who the hell is Diddy? And we said, Diddy will beat Uber. We were right. And we said, Grab will beat Uber. We were right. We, we stumbled upon this company in Sydney called Canva. We thought this would be a billion dollar company. And people go, who would give a billion dollars to a creative company? Well, we told you. And so I've been following what we've been doing the last three years. You would have done really well. Uh, most people who have put in a million dollars through various assets on our platform have returned somewhere close to 30 to, th 30 to 40 million dollars. So let me tell you about the up network and where we're going in the blockchain. So one of the things we've seen as a quantum shift in, uh, in our business is we're typically we're using VCs and data and we're being a data provider for institutions. But one of the things we've seen, particularly in the last six to eight months, is that for every nine startup investors, there was one crypto investor last year. Now, let's turn that on the head. Nine crypto investors, one startup investor. The market has completely changed. And people who had traditional VC funds are now looking at setting up their own crypto funds. It's been a major, major change. So give you a bit more detail about Otup and how we do it. We have, we have our own analyst, we have our own algorithm, and a, an interesting statistic that still works as of three and a half years of doing this product is that 99% of companies that get a buy rating on Otup raise money within three to six months. Some even get acquired. So we've got a pretty good reputation when it comes to uh, picking the winners, but now we're going to be crazy and try the crypto and ICO space where things can change 20 or 30%. We're used to things changing 20 or 30% every 6 to 12 months. Now let's change the dynamic a bit. So, what's happening in the ICO space? So, to give you an understanding of what Up Network is, before I go into it, let's tell you what the problems we're seeing from investors and particularly people who are new to this space. Uh, if you asked us this time last year about Bitcoin being hot, people would have gone, oh yeah, good for you. Now that doesn't exist. Everyone's, every, everyone and their dog knows about BitConnect. And you know, when I was back home in Melbourne for Christmas, I heard tradies and you know, subbies all saying, yeah, yeah, I made a lot of money on Bitcoin. Good for you. And of course, a lot of them have lost a lot of bit money on Bitcoin because they, or on Ether or what have you, because they bought in November, December. Hmm. However, we don't want to see those problems. And particularly in ICOs, there's been a lot of noise. Uh, and one of the things that we've done is pride ourselves on transparency and accurate ratings, and we don't want to see the same problems that are happening now. Uh, a great segue was the previous uh, speaker that talked about things being institutionalized. Because at the moment, people get their ratings, and I'll go through it, by YouTube celebrities. So these are a couple of things that are happening in the market. Now, ICOs are rapidly replacing VC-backed rounds, and I'll show some statistics about that. Now, evaluating ICOs, now, that's really challenging. Who thinks they're an expert? We're sort of an expert, but, you know, we're still getting there as well. And who has access to those deals before they get on Binance? Some people do, yeah. Wholesale investor, they're going to make me, make, make me upset about this, but, yes, they're one of the few people that have access. Most people do not, particularly as it's a retail game. So let's look at some data that our research team will put together. And this is based on all the deals that have been seen recently. Now... Every single, oh, I've seen so many VC funds in the last three or four months that never existed last year. A Sequoia, who are they anymore? There's something capital, blockchain capital, capital block, block, block. Everything's got a block on it these days. Um, so, uh, so easiest way to raise a crypto fund, put a block in it. That's the way it is. Um, for the past year, from 2010, 2016, 98% of deals were done by uh, angel investors and VCs. Last year, we saw about 10% of funding go to ICOs. Now, and based on analysis, in the next two, three years, that's going to raise by two times or more. We're saying safe to be two, but that could even be larger in the coming years. Now, evaluating ICOs is challenging. Who bought into BitConnect? I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to run up down the stage and go big connect. I'm not going to do that. But um, uh, a lot of people weren't ups actually upset with big connect. They were actually upset with the YouTube promoters. 
and the FOMO that currently happens with a lot of the retail investors, especially with crypto. Now, you've got paid ICO ranking pages. If you give them a couple of Bitcoins, they'll increase your ranking. YouTube is a big source of uh, people's uh, investment decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I get it for Avengers trailers, but most people in the crypto space get it for, uh, for advice. And that's what we're trying to stop because a lot of that advice is just shilling. And that's a term for people who are promoting their own agendas. And FOMO hype. I've never seen such FOMO hype in my life. As soon as there's one big announcement for a, uh, let's uh, give me someone. Let's reach out. Someone give me a currency. Tron. Okay, Tron. okay. Now, if I was to say Tron is going to be hyped, it's going to then hype out or something along those lines. A couple of YouTube promoters will help push the price up by 10% purely by a name, or they've already bought the pr uh, the, the price on. Uh, they've already bought the uh, the token on an exchange two days earlier. Did a video and away they go. They're actually incentivized and there's no transparency about how they, they make their money and ultimately what they're gaining from telling you what to buy. The last thing is access. Now, there's bonuses, there's discounts. If you guys are involved in ICO rounds, you understand that there's very limited access and you will need to get that access faster. Institutional access don't see the deals at all. They're only looking at four or five currencies. So we're launching the UP network, which includes three main components of the, to of the token. We've been centralizing our ratings for some time. Now, what we're doing is decentralizing. If you guys are familiar with the equity space, there's the star mine ratings. We're building that for startups and ICOs, where everyone can contribute. And your, base, your, your, your rating is not on how much you FOMO, but on the price targets you set. If in 12 months you think Tron is going to be worth ten, two times, well, then that's what you're going to be rated, and that's, that's, and that's how you're going to earn tokens through our platform. That's the reigning minings. Tips, and I'll get to that in a moment, helps pe promote people who uh, have done something good for you because you followed their advice. We've got deal, so deal flow and, deal and, and data distribution. I'll go to those right now. Now, how, let's look at the odd up uh, token, the ratings mining. Now, what the ratings mining does is incentivize people for getting it right. The same thing happens in equities market at the moment. If you rate BHP, Woolies, and you put a price target on that, and that price target's good, guess what your bank's going to do? If, the, if their institutional investors have made money from it, they're going to give you a nice bonus. It's pretty simple. Same thing is applying in this, where your, your word is your value. So we're going to hold you accountable to that. Ratings tips, well, you can see it, receive tokens from members who show their appreciation. One of the biggest things we're doing with the ICO deal flow is giving early access. We get to see every single ICO deal out there. And if people have gone, how could I get access? How do I get access? So you help contribute to the platform, we're going to give you access to those early deals. And data distribution to institutions. Now, uh, a lot of people uh, in partners, and particularly in crypto, talk about I'm getting a partnership with someone. We have partners with Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, FactSet, you name it, we've got them already. Our data is already used by those institutions. So if you're using our platform, you can actually have access to be distributed to our third parties as part of the UP network. Now, some people may want to show their visibility. It's not just for startups and not just for ICOs, it's also for institutions. As I said, everyone's doing a blockchain company. So if you want to get institutional investors to invest in them, then we can help, help promote in front of institutions through our platform. Now, these are the partners I just mentioned who use our platform. So rather than we're getting a partnership, these partnerships are already in place. If, uh, and also clients will also use us as well. People like Goldman, people like JP Morgan, the analysts use us. People like 500 and Kima Ventures from the deal flow side also use us as well. Now, we're growing a community. We've joined Telegram because that's the thing to do when you do an ICO, of course. Facebook worked fine, but now Telegram's the, 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 the tool, and we've seen massive growth in that area, and we're helping, you know, sort of talk about our ICO and how we're doing this. Um, we've also got a fair bit of people in the community uh, showing support for ODAP. Uh, very high level, I'm not allowed to talk about anything public or make, make an offer, that's the legal term here. But let me tell you about what we're doing in regards to the ICO ratings. We're launching that in Q4, we're actually doing some free uh, access in the next, uh, next week. You'll get to see Electronium this week if you want to have a view on what that's going to happen in the next 12 months. 
a uh, couple of things very quickly because time is of my, uh, against me. We're launching Unicorn Hunt, which is our own coin telegraph. Uh, Upshares, which is going to be able to see all detailed cap uh, tables for all startups via the blockchain. And startup tokenization. So companies that have been developed will be able to tokenize their products. And not just brand new startups. Startups have been around for three or four years. Now, quickly, this is me. I'm James and my co-founder, Jackie. We've been doing this for four years. And our team has uh, grown to about 50 members worldwide. Now, my 30 seconds is almost up, but I wanted to give you some information. I'm outside if you want to have a chat about what we're doing and the details around it. Upnetwork.io is our ICO website, um, as well as odup.com. Sign up. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. And now, please welcome again to the stage, Bob Bonomo from Blockchain Terminal. <laughs> okay. Wow, I have a, such a feeling of deja vu. It's amazing here. As I said, I'm the president of, of uh, Blockchain Terminal. Um, our objective is to bridge the traditional asset management community with the burgeoning cryptocurrency industry. Some legalese, once again, always have to satisfy the attorneys. There's a challenge. The tools, processes, and systems that traditional asset managers use just don't work with crypto. It's as simple as that. However, there's some quotes here that I believe are underscoring the pending dem pent up demand for institutions to embrace this new technology. As I mentioned earlier, Coinbase sees $10 billion of institutional money sitting on the sidelines. Goldman Sachs has embraced the technology to, to the purchase of P Poloniex and their own crypto trading desk. My favorite, perhaps, is from Mike Novogratz. I had the honor of being on a panel with him in Sun Valley, Idaho a few weeks ago. He says, the herd is coming. I can hear them. So at the highest level, our solution is to service the institutional investment uh, environment, and we, and we do it through two fundamental layers. We've built an initial product called Compliance Guard, which prevents hedge fund fraud. And that's huge for traditional asset managers, even more so for crypto managers, because they cannot prove what they're doing, what they're selling to the client, is actually what they're, how they're managing the portfolio behind the scenes. Most importantly is we're building an open app store for hedge funds. Something like the uh, iPhone app store eight years ago, nine years ago, Apple created that framework, put a few apps on the shelf, and then incentivize the rest of the world to build millions of apps that exist today and produce revenue sharing models uh, to benefit that ecosystem. I'd like to do a little explainer video right now. If the volume would come up. Platform that allows institutional investors to confidently enter the cryptocurrency market. By combining market data directly from top cryptocurrency exchanges, information about upcoming ICOs, as well as news from publications, blogs, and social media, our hardware creates a complete picture of the crypto world. With Blockchain Terminal, everyone can intelligently participate in this emerging market. The terminal is equipped with an open app store that brings the world's blockchain and crypto apps right onto your screen. Our software allows you to transact and helps you direct orders to market makers and exchanges alike. Underneath the BCT is our first-of-its-kind compliance guard technology, which automatically creates a transparent audit trail for trading operations, both large and small. That's the terminal. What about the BCT token? Well, it's the gas that keeps the terminal running. The BCT token is required to register, transact, and utilize applications all within the platform. The BCT token is the means of exchange for developers, for investors, for you. You've got the hardware, you've got the apps, you've got the coin, you've got the blockchain terminal. Click the button below to learn more. So in, in summary, we have an open app store. We like to call ourselves the open Bloomberg for crypto, right? Bl uh, Bloomberg, Reuters, Tellerate, they're expensive, they're closed, and they're slow to develop new capabilities. We want to be the exact opposite of that framework. 
even though we're focused, as you'll see, the dual panels outside, the bottom screen is all about getting best execution. It's a trading platform. It's much, much more than that. We want to be a turnkey solution for the entire life cycle of crypto management, front, middle, and back office solutions. At the base of our app store is our compliance guard product that prevents hedge fund fraud by basically capturing exceptions that come out of the trading platform that deviate from the mandate being sold to the client. All institutions have that, except it's an opaque environment. Those exceptions never leave the hedge fund. And they've been the genesis, the petri dish, if you will, for all aspects of fraud from Madoff to Visium last year. Um, we capture those events, route them to uh, predetermined uh, recipients to get ahead of that headline risk, to be able to have a dialogue, to understand what actually went on, and ultimately to be able to perform a compliance audit. where you can extract the audit trail out of the private encrypted blockchain, validate that it has been modified by recalculating the hash that's stored in the public chain, and then having that audit dialogue that's so important. When you do an audit, the most important thing to realize is the data you're looking at is accurate and has not been tampered with. We're not just a uh, white paper. As you can see, the terminal is in beta mode out outside in the, in the hallway. We've been uh, live in 20 traditional hedge funds with our compliance guard product. And we're currently building 200 beta terminals in uh, midtown Manhattan where we're located. And we're giving those away to thought leaders globally in the industry to make sure that our product roadmap, which I'll go over in a minute, is aligned with the best interests of the community. Ultimately, it's all about getting best execution aggregating market prices from exchanges and market makers to make sure that it's simplified so that you don't have to hop from exchange to exchange to get uh, pieces of your order flow. It's ultimately about data, data from all the exchanges, data on all the cryptocurrencies, and I just spoke to a gentleman before, we want to speak to him about potentially partnering. We're also capturing information on ICOs, the quality of their white paper, the quality of their technical team, how well they're adhering to their stated uh, discount schedules, and ultimately post-ICO, how they hit their delivery deadlines. This is the beginning of what I mentioned earlier about the evolution upstream to a formalized research process, and I think it's very, very important. Also aggregated news and chat from across the globe so that you can have one portal into those uh, viewpoints. Once you have the uh, global data, you need analytics. Tri whoops, let's go back. You need analytics to interpret that. Um, and graphical representation makes those decision uh, events much simpler and much easier to, to effect. Our entire business model is based on partnerships. We built the baseline compliance guard app and we're incentivizing both sides of the aisle, traditional, asset, traditional vendors who serve traditional asset managers to broaden their tool sets to connect to crypto. And we're also incentivizing blockchain developers to build tools, products, and services to sell to, to the traditional asset management community. We've recently established a partnership with Factset, a uh, leading market data provider who also bought Portware three years ago, the leading global provider of high-end algorithmic-based trading for traditional asset classes. They've committed to deploy our Compliance Guard product across their entire installed base of 90,000 seats, representing $16 trillion in traditional assets under management. We're also uh, in, in our pipeline is to augment their foreign exchange tools, which are world-class and are algorithmic-based, to connect them to sources of crypto liquidity. So this is about a partnership with development communities. It's about incentivizing those developers to build product. We will do an 80%, 20% revenue share. They'll get 80%, we'll get 20%. Um, and also we plan to do the similar revenue share as we begin to push institutional trading flow through the platform. We'll be negotiating revenue shares with various crypto exchanges. Our objective is to build the best of breed, continuously evolving set of tools to manage cryptocurrencies, whether traditional managers broadening to crypto or elevating the game of existing crypto hedge fund managers. Let's talk about the token economics. Uh, the BCT token is used to register applications. We'll curate those. We'll validate their performance uh, and their security uh, legitimacy to transact on the platform, to add apps, to use apps, and even to store microtransaction on the audit trail. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about revenue sharing from the App Store developers as well as the transaction flow through the system. I have two minutes. Uh, and it's all about incentivizing players to participate and, and gain uh, uh, and participate in the revenue flowing through the platform. We can skip this. this is basically a re re recreation of the prior one. We've assembled an amazing group of internal 
uh, technicians as well as a, an amazing uh, advisory board. This is me. I spent 30 years on Wall Street, was a developer, um, reached the level of chief information officer at two major global firms, Oppenheimer Funds, a retail mutual fund company, and Alliance Bernstein, a world-class research-driven manager of high net worth, institutional, and retail products. And I've been working crypto since 2013. Our advisory board is filled with some common names. John Matonis, the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation. I'd like to also point out our uh, Todd Rupert, who's the ex-CEO of T. Rowe Price, and many others. Miko Matsumura um, is a gentleman we partnered with because of our desire to uh, begin to uh, drill down into the quality of ICOs. He formed the ICO Governance uh, org organization, and we're partnering with him to manifest that information, and we'll be getting those feedback loops from external parties. Very proud of my, my executive team, uh, filled with uh, entrepreneurs and domain experts. And here's our anticipated roadmap. This is not a white paper, this is a real product. We have our alpha product in about six installations. We're building 200 beta terminals. We're giving them away as we speak. We have a, a, a planned version of the solution, best of breed applications across five domains. Best execution, market data and analytics, aggregated news, aggregated chat with sentiment analysis, and of course compliance. I'm gonna deliver that also to retail consumers without requiring the hardware. And that's gonna be delivered in July. And ultimately the complete building of our app store framework with the full token dynamics and revenue sharing capabilities is targeted for completion in November of this year. Thank you. And go to bct.io to learn more about our ICO. We're finishing up. We, we met our private pre-sale of 20 million. Uh, our target is 50. Um, and we, we're, we're finishing the ICO raise uh, uh, April 15th. Also, come please see us at the booth. We have Brian, we have myself, um, and we uh, also have uh, 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 Burned Pitak, who's there as well. Thank you very much, and uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you, Bob. And now, slight change of plan. We will be moving to a break and we'll be resuming in 30 minutes. <laughs>